Well, hello, traders and investors. I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. We take a look at these markets and doing it from a neoclassical perspective. Each time, we're asking ourselves what happened today, what might it tell us about the coming ones. I do the show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday, broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube, and it's under the channel L.A. Little. If you haven't subscribed, you want to get updates anytime I push content, just reach up in the right-hand side of the uh, screen there. Uh, hit the uh, subscribe button. If you want to help us out, you'll spread the message. If you like what we do, you know, I encourage you, you know, YouTube makes it very easy. Just pop down into YouTube. Uh, you know, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's all sorts of uh, various ways you can communicate what we do here. And I thank you in advance. As far as what these markets did today and what they look like they're setting up to do, let's take a look at the ending numbers to begin with here. So, uh, you had the S&P down today. Actually, you had the indexes in general down. So Dow Jones, NASDAQ, NDX, all of them fell a little bit, but not much, right? And you actually had the tech stocks hold up best, and that's actually what you want to see. If you're bullish on these markets and you want to remain that way. As far as what happened elsewhere overseas, we had another lift in the, NAS in, in the uh, DAX. Uh, same thing in the Hong Kong market. Uh, pretty much elsewhere, it was down across the board. So you didn't have much lift uh, in most of the rest of the market. As far as uh, you know, what's getting hit, it's the oil market. The oil market has been declining, continues to decline. That rollover that took place in the oil market, you know, I came back at the, you know, it, I, I know I told members this. I'm pretty sure I broadcast it a couple times. WTI at 50 was the key numbers. You saw the change that was starting to take place in the drillers uh, in terms of the number of uh, wells that were uh, being drilled, or not so much drilled, but in the number of wells that were actually online. And uh, those numbers come out every Friday, and they were starting to level out. You could see that you know the trend was changing on them, and it started to affect uh, the markets too because that puts more market oil back into the uh, storage capacity. So uh, oil market and energy was the ones hit again today. The rest of the market just kind of held up and it's been holding. It's been sitting there. Let's look at this charts here. Start with the S&P 500. So, you know, I'm, I'm back at uh, I'm back at the uh, office. Uh, I've been on the road for quite a while. So, you know, it's a little bit easier now for me to show you everything. I got all the tools in front of me again and I got the full range of, uh, you know, screens here to work from. S&P 500 had 2190 roughly as the uh, target on its ABCD structure hasn't gotten there and right now it's kind of consolidating just hanging up here at the top what this thing wants to do is pop up here and hit it all the other indexes have already done it this one wants to do it we got the Fed coming out uh, and doing their thing uh, this coming Wednesday right they start the meetings tomorrow they do their thing on Wednesday uh, we'll get a notification Wednesday what they want to do I it, it just looks to me like this thing wants to pop that area on Wednesday and then probably get the decline. Uh, as far as, you know, is that the way it's going to lay out? Well, you never know, right? You hypothesize, you watch, you see how things lay out and how they uh, set up. And that's just the way this thing's set up. Why? Because the projection's there. Why also? Well, because the others have already done it. And when you get others doing the same thing, typically if you get two or three to do it, then most of the others are going to do it. And that's true when they're changing trend. It's true when they're doing ABCD structures, right? If they start doing it and all of them or a few of them start to complete, then the rest of them tend to follow. ABCD structure, NASDAQ, daily, finished, right? Hanging there now. Hanging there while we wait on that uh, S&P to do its thing. NDX is the same setup. The Russell was the first to complete that ABCD structure. It completed it way back here, right? It's been hanging there ever since. Look at that. Big, long consolidation sideways. Now, the good thing about this from a bullish perspective is when this thing comes back, right, if you look at the neoclassical thought, if, you, if you've taken my crash course, you already know what I'm about to say. If you haven't, uh, lucky for you, we're going to do it again at some point. Uh, but this is the breakout right breakout is here the green bar shows you that it was a confirmed breakout in other words volume was higher here than it was back there right so they get a confirmed breakout and it hasn't tested for more than six bars now what does that mean neoclassically that means when it comes back right probabilities become extremely high that that comeback to this area 
is going to get bought. Very high probability. And so if you want to measure up your charts, look at where you should be buying, this one is set up the best in terms of knowing where to buy. The others are not nearly as clean, but this one will give you a good clue and you should be paying attention to it. As far as uh, what else is happening, you know, last night uh, I did the weekly. I kind of basically, you know, just did the S&P and said, you know, here's the three time frames. Here's the way it's set up. Folks, don't overthink this thing. Market had a big run, right? Market's not going to just give it up. It's going to roll. It's going to give you a retrace. It's going to allow you to get in on the retrace if you haven't got yourself in a bad position to start with. And what I mean by that is if you're up here buying this at the highs, right? You're buying, 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 and then all of a sudden it's back down here, it's gonna be hard for you to pull the trigger. You gotta be patient, you gotta wait for what you know will come, most likely, and even if it doesn't, right? Even if you get another leg up, right? At that point, if you consolidate long enough, then you can make a different trade, but more than likely you're gonna get the retrace into here. That's typically what happens. And this is a game of probabilities. I mean, that's what you're doing. You, if you know what the neoclassical model tells you, then you can wait with confidence and know that you're going to get the setups that you need. You know, you're going to get the entry points that you want. You're going to be in the green most of the time, not in the red. And that's what it's all about. I don't really have much else to talk about. We're set up, fed on Wednesday. Bank of Japan on Thursday, expectations are all high, right? It's already priced in. In other words, if you're going to get some sort of surprise, it's going to be a negative, not a positive surprise. I can't see the Fed coming out and saying they're going to lower rates. I can't see them saying they're going to you know, do more QE. This market wants them to say we're not going to raise rates. As long as they say that and they don't seem to say anything else, then the market's going to be okay, but they've already priced it in. Bank of Japan, they've priced in more QE, quasi, you know, kamikaze more QE. And if they don't get it, they're going to be disappointed. In England, in Europe, they were able to get by one quarter or one month here saying, hey, we're going to do something next time around. If they don't do it next time around, market's going to be disappointed. That's the way the market works. And if you want evidence of what the market thinks, you know, pop over, take a look at the dollar, right? And I'll bring the dollar up right quick. What is the dollar doing? Dollar is going up. Dollar keeps hanging up here today. It was a little bit more volume as an inside day, but you're over the swing point high. You broke out here. So if we're doing that same sort of thing we just did with the, uh, the Russell, right? You get the same setup here with a retest regen back into this area. If it hangs up here more than six bars, it's on number five now. If it hangs up there, six bars before it comes back, right, more than six bars, then you're going to have a high probability of this going higher. And not only that, it's already probably going higher because if you bring the weekly over, and actually let's just change this one to be easier. If we do the weekly here and then put our screen back on, you know, this thing has a broad range uh, down in this area. And if you double that range back up, right, up into here, this is what it's doing. It's testing that little area between the lower floor and the upper floor and once it breaks through folks the target becomes here becomes there and that's what it's going to do why well because everybody else is going to devalue again or at least that is the expectation folks thank you for joining me if you want to learn more right we're going to do another crash course at some point here send me an email tat at tatoday.com let me know you're interested. If there's enough interest, we'll put on another one. Have a great one. Thanks for joining me. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Good night.